Now, I'll say this a couple of times during this. Anything we do today will be in the final exam. I don't mean your presentations. I mean the reading and writing thing we do. Okay? I'll talk more about the exam in the second half. Johnny. Yes. How many fingers are there here? Sorry. How many fingers are here? Uh, finger. <laughs> Hands. <laughs> All right. If I tell you it's eight fingers, what are the other two? Thumb. That's right. So uh, some people say that thumbs are fingers. Other people say that fingers are fingers. I, I think we say we've got ten fingers. So you're right, there are ten. Okay, he's something his finger. It should be two in there. So he's something his finger to get the attention of the waiter. Tap, cross, shrugged, or clicked. The thing is clicked. <laughs> That's right, clicked. You can say clicked his fingers. You can also say snapped. So like that. So that is what we call snapping his fingers. Johnny, can you snap your fingers with both hands or just one? Actually, <laughs> both hands or just one? Can you do it with your left hand? Sorry. Can you can you snap your fingers with your left hand? Left hand, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, some people can, some people can't. I can't, but my my daughter can. She. He sings and snaps her fingers. All right, thank you, Johnny. Coco. Hello. How are you, Coco? Coco, uh, whenever she sat down, she something her knees. Folded, crossed, shrugged, or clicked. Hello. Which one? The load. Uh, folded. So you oh. uh, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. No, that's my mistake. That's wrong. <laughs> that. Uh, what? Which, which one did you say? It's not folded. Cross. That's right, it's crossed her knees. So we say you cross your knees, it means you put one knee over the other. So you crossed her knees. Have a look at what I've written for you, Coco. And don't worry, it's private. Okay. Um, so we've got clicked and crossed. Thank you, Coco. Annie. Yes? If you do not know the answer to a question, you can do something your shoulders. Do you know the word? Shrug my, shrug my shoulders. <laughs> That's right. Can you shrug your shoulders? Show me what, how you shrug your shoulders. <laughs> That's right. It just means lift them up. It's a silly gesture. I don't know where shrug comes from. Uh -huh. We talk about shrug his shoulders. Do 
you do that in your culture. If you don't know, you're, I don't know. You just shrug your shoulders. Yes. Hmm. Seems to. Be, I've seen Africans doing it, so I think it's a worldwide, probably the result of globalization, globalized shrugging. Thank you. Thank you. Kim. Are you are you scary, Tim? Hello, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. No, I'm not scary. I. I that's good. You don't look scary. <laughs> are you in your dorm, are Tim? You in your dorm, Tim? Yes. Okay. Uh, so he was quite scary. He summed in his fist and looked me in the eye. Clenched, crossed, clicked, or folded. Folded. No. You fold your arms. Yeah, it's clench your fists. You clench his fists and look me in the eye. How would you describe this? Uh, muscle man. Yes. Do you find that attractive? Uh, Do you find this? Do you think this looks good? Oh. I think this is scary. <laughs> mm, I do too. Do people, do you have, they call them bodybuilders. Just a minute. No. Uh, do you have bodybuilders in your culture? Do, they, do you have them in Taiwan? Uh, female or just male? Uh, I think most, uh, mostly they are male. Hmm. Uh, well, they're mostly male they're here mostly too, male. but um, they are a lot of females now, and I don't think they look very nice. Wait a minute, I'll show you one. Um, so this yeah. lady is a female <laughs> bodybuilder. Very sexy. So. Oh, do, you know, do you know, it's very hard for a woman to get like this. Do you know what drug they take to, to make themselves like this? For mm. It's called steroids. So they take steroids and it gives them, uh, it reduces body fat. and it increases muscle mass and uh, women I think she must take steroids this lady because you can't make and the males take them too so um, it's interesting okay thank you thank you Ivy Hello, teacher. You don't like this? Mm, no. So it's not your goal to be a bodybuilder. That's good. All right, Ivy, can you do the next one? If music has a good rhythm, you might something your foot. What's a rhythm? Uh, tempo. Uh, it's the, it's the, <laughs> it's hard to say actually, it's the, the timing of the music. In fact, they say that Mandarin is a, um, a rhythmic language. And one of the reasons that 
I find it difficult to to learn Mandarin, and Taiwanese people find it difficult to learn English, is because the rhythm of each language is very different. Anyway, if music has a good rhythm, you might watch your foot, click, cross, shrug, or tap. Tap. That's right, you tap your foot. And people do that in your culture if you hear a good tune? You tap your foot? Yes. Okay. Can you play any musical instruments, Siri? Um, piano. Are you very good? Uh, it's a pity it's the end of the year, otherwise I could have asked you to give us a video of you playing. Yeah, you can play and Coco can dance. Thank you, Ivy. Cindy Lin. Thank you. Hello, teacher. When my mother was cross, she used to something her arm. Slow, clench, shrug, or tap. Fold. That's right, fold. <laughs> All right, now I'm just going to go through these again so that you know them because there are two questions from here in the exam. So going back, going from the end, we fold our arms. You tap your foot. You clench your fist. All right, and then the last three, the three before, you shrug your shoulders, you cross your knees, and you click your fingers. Now, there's no particular reason why we use these words. It's just usage. That's what we do. So they're very specific for each type of the body. So you should know those. And that's called a hint. Okay. A Merry Christmas to you too, Rita. Uh, now, I want to do a reading, and then we'll do a presentation. Now, the reading is called Exotic in Hawaiian. Uh, Rita, how do you pronounce this? Is it, is it Hawaiian? of Taiwan. Yeah, but how do you say this Hua word? Lian. Is it Hawaiian? Hawaiian, so about right. Hua okay. Hawaiian. Hawaiian, okay. I have trouble pronouncing yeah. it. All right. So it says Hawaiian is sometimes yes. described as Taiwan's Eden. The clean air and slow pace of life are attractive to many, but not least members of Taiwan's foreign community, foreigner community, who visit for the surfing, trekking, cycling, bird watching, and myriad other outdoor activities. Some of them have come and stayed, and in recent months, Hualien has seen a small burgeoning of foreign-run eateries, which have greatly diversified the country's profile. Myriad means a lot or many. Uh, burgeoning means increasing. So myriad other outdoor activities means many others. And burgeoning of foreign run eateries means an increasing number. And greatly diversified the country's food profile. Now, Rita, do you know the meaning of Eden? Have you heard of the Garden of Eden? Adam and uh, that's Shara. right. Shara. This is this is the Christian Bible. Well, the Bible says that the first two human beings uh, lived in the Garden of Eden. Now, with that knowledge, it says here 
Hualien is sometimes described as Taiwan's Eden. Why is it described as Taiwan, Taiwan's Eden? What reason? Okay, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, not not many people live there. That's right. Yeah, and so okay. I'm going to tell you it's because Hualien offers a actually has the potential to offer a wonderful lifestyle. So your your answer is correct, but I'm telling you that this is the answer here. So it's described as Eden because it has the potential to offer a, a wonderful lifestyle that has clean air and a slower pace of life. So that's also another hint. What is a hint, Rita? What is a hint? Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. What does the word hint mean? Uh, uh, expression. Say again. Uh, uh, suggestion. <laughs> yes, a suggestion. It's a strong suggestion. It's more than a suggestion, it's a pointer. So if I'm telling you that you said correctly that that is an indication of why it's Eden, but I'm telling you specifically it's because that it's because why am I when I say it's a hint, what do you think it is a hint for? Why, why am I hinting? All right, Rita, what, what, are you, what are you going to do in two weeks? in this class. Final test. Final exactly. So, so hint. Hint. So any hint today are for the final exam. So I'm telling you that this is not the correct answer. The other one I gave before is, okay? So don't forget. If you get it wrong, Rita, I'll take two marks off, all right? Thank you, Rita. Um, yes, Alan. Sir. Yes. Do you like food? Do you like food? Yes. What's your favorite meal? What's your favorite meal? Mm. Meal. McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's, that's fair enough. Okay. McDonald's, now here it says, now here it says foreign run eateries foreign have greatly diversified, have greatly the, diversified food the country's food profile. What does that mean? Maybe it means that the <laughs> the foreigner bring the uh, different food to Taiwan and make Taiwan's that food more diverse. That's right. They're making Taiwan's food more diverse. Now, can you pronounce this for me? Now, 
Alan, can you say this? Alan, can you say this? Oh, in, in Chinese? Yes. Uh, water talk. <laughs> water talk. Does it mean salt lick? Does it mean salt lick? <laughs> yes. Okay. What's a salt lick? What's a salt lick? If if an animal went to a salt lick, what does that mean? What does that mean? Um, it's a. Uh, Place where animals go to rig and get their salt. That's right. How do you get your salt? How do you get your salt? Oh. By food. <laughs> yeah. So you can have it added to your food. By you or the person by cooking it, person cooking it. Or you can uh, get it in the food when you buy it. Uh, I do know that I believe that Taiwanese people use less salt than Australians. Uh, my partner is Taiwanese and she never puts any e extra salt in the cooking. She puts pepper on but not salt. I, al I always put salt on mine and she doesn't like it. She says I'm ruining the taste. Thank you, Alan. All right, so most prominently located is Salt Lick. So this is a restaurant which opened eight months ago on Hualien's busy Chongsong Road with a specialty in American Southern style barbecue. Now, it says that Salt Lick has been built from the ground up. That, that means um, they started it as a new restaurant and built it from the very beginning by Jason Delicta from Michigan and Benjamin Mercer from Alaska, who have talked about starting a restaurant when they were both studying. They finally opened the Salt Lick in April, both have a background in catering, and want to introduce a different kind of food to Taiwan. Um, from the ground up, um, Joanne. Yes. Joanne, what does that mean? If you do something from the ground up, mm. so here they they're building a restaurant. What does it mean? They start from they start from the very beginning. But that's right. That's right. And what's catering? Also food. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like cooking but like cooking. it's offering food, it's offering food. Being, being being a chef, being, being a cook. Chef, being Can you cook, Joanne? No. <laughs> Do you like salt? Do you like salt? So so. So so. All right. Do you do exercise? Do you do exercise? <laughs> Not really. Not really, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Joanne. Um, so they started it from the ground up. Now, there are not many authentic American restaurants in Taiwan, and most Taiwanese don't know what authentic American food is. They think it's hamburgers and pizza. We, we are referring to these two men, uh, Mercer and Delicta, want to expand their knowledge the idea of what a barbecue is for Taiwanese is much the same, sorry, is much different from our idea. So they're saying the American idea of a barbecue and the Taiwanese idea of a barbecue are very different. So they want to introduce them to real American-style barbecue. 
barbecue. So when these love to eat meat, and this was a different style for them to try. Now, um, James. Hello. What, what does authentic mean? Real. Yeah, so you are an authentic Taiwanese person. Yes. You're born in Taiwan? Okay. You're born and bred in Taiwan. Now, if I say... Uh, typical American food, what do in this... Sorry, just a minute. All right. In this paragraph, what are they saying that Taiwanese think is typical American food? So typical means what do they think Americans usually eat? Hamburgers and pizza. Right. Now, is that the same as authentic American food? Um, no. Correct. So I'm telling you that typical food, or typical U.S. food, is not the same as authentic U.S. food. All right? That's another hint. All right. So, now, do the Taiwanese love meat? James? Yes. Okay. What sort of meat? What sort of meat? All kind of meat, beef, pork, chicken, fish. Mm. Do do the Taiwan do you have barbecues in Taiwan? Yeah. What do you cook on it? What do you cook on it? Mm. Meat and um, some vegetables meat. and fish and mushrooms. Hamburgers? Yeah. Hamburgers. Hamburgers. It's a lot like a lot like American hamburgers. Okay, so you do do it because we have them in Australia and we cook uh, steaks and uh, sausages as well. All right. Um, so these people. It's going to be a barbecue restaurant, this Salt Lake place, and it's going to be a different style. Thank you, James. Now, in creating, can you read this? It's not too small. All right, in creating Salt Lake, the pair did not do much of the construction and renovation work on the restaurant themselves. So they made it themselves. Remember, I said um, from the ground up. So they've they've done much of the construction on the restaurant themselves, with help from friends. The same applies to the food, and the Salt Lake is committed to making things from scratch, from the sources, potatoes and chips, and particularly the time-consuming process of cooking brisket ribs and pork shoulders. Now. Um, from the ground up, what is the expression in here? This is, uh, Lulu. Hello. Just a minute. Uh, in that previous uh, paragraph, that Lulu, previous paragraph, Lulu, there was an expression was from the ground up. What means the same? What means the same, means the same in this paragraph? From the ground up. 
So from the very beginning. Post junction. Um, um. Making things from scratch. Scratch, that's right. So that's another way of saying you do something from the beginning. So making things from scratch. So they make all these things, uh, sauces, potato chips, and so on. What does time-consuming mean? Seem the food uh, need more time to make. That's right. That's and right. if I say, if I did these did two, sorry, these two wrong, wrong way. Did these two men, these two men um, do the construction and renovation entirely by themselves. So, on this restaurant, did they do it only them? So, entirely by themselves means just them. So, was it just them? Mm, no. From f help from friends. Correct. And that's Correct. another hint. That's another hint. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Is that, what about you, Lulu? Do you do you, do you like meat? Do you like meat? Mm, yes. <laughs> All right. Are you a good cook? Are you a good cook? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, now, now, brisket, ribs, brisket and pork shoulder. pork shoulder. They cook it to mouth-watering tenderness. Mouth -watering tenderness. What does that mean? Mm. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It yeah, makes your mouth water when you think. So, what makes your mouth water, Lulu? What food, what food do you love? If you smell it, your mm. mouth waters. Ice cream. Ice cream. You like ice cream? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lulu. All right. Thank you, Lulu. Um, thank you. Creating Salt Lake creating is a part of a journey for both owners. It's like it's taking living in another country to the next level, adding the opening a restaurant that opened his eyes to many new aspects of Taiwanese society he'd never experienced before. Um, Ray. Hello, teacher. All right, if you open your eyes to something, what does that mean? He's opened his eyes to many new aspects. Why? So why is opening this restaurant opened his eyes to many new aspects of Taiwanese society? Because um, and this new adding residents uh, add the new uh, bar. Uh, I think well, do you think he makes new Taiwanese friends in the restaurant? Uh, 
Yes. Yes, he will. So if he meets new people, then they'll tell him about new Taiwanese part, new Taiwanese, sorry, parts of culture in Taiwan he's never experienced. So if you came to Australia, Ray, you'd learn about Australian culture. Yes, and if I went there, I'd learn about yours. So by opening up a restaurant, he's going to learn something about the culture. Yeah. Ray, where would you like to go if you were given a choice of traveling? Um, Japan. Japan, why? Because I... Because uh, in Japan, I think that people in that old, uh, mostly elderly, so I, I, I when I, I travel to there, I feel feel comfortable. Good. Uh, instead can of can you can you speak Japanese? Some, some, um, a little. Do you know what this is? What? What's that? I'm holding up. Oh. Oh. Seaweed. Yeah, seaweed. Seaweed. Yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite snacks. And this is from Japan. Uh, I don't know if you can read this. Oh, seaweed pieces, sort of like um, sushi wrapping. So these are very popular here. There's two types: Japanese and um, uh, Korean. And the Japanese are very sweet. There's, there's too much sugar, and the Korean, there's too much salt. So for me, anyways, but I prefer the Japanese, so that's my snack. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Okay, uh, Wendy or Sylvia, can we do the first presentation now? Nicholas. Yes? Can we talk a little bit about this article? Um, yes, certainly. Uh, I w w we have sent you the uh, 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 website address of uh, uh, of uh, uh, Netter's coverage of this restaurant. Have you seen it? We thought you might uh, want I to see the real the picture. Uh, of yeah. 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 I can't the load it in here. The okay. And um, also, we want to tell our from students that um, this is an article from Taipei Times, and in it there is a coverage of there's picture of the owners. 有那个呃，这个这是从台北 Times 出来的文章。我们线上有订那个报纸，然后 Nicholas 他因为他们有电子版嘛，所以 Nicholas 用那个部分的资料，但上面有那个 owner 的照片，所以是不是要去把那个网址抛出来了？你们有空可以去看一下。And I was just wondering that uh, I have two questions. One is that what kind of problems do you think you imagine these Americans would confront when they want to open a restaurant in Taiwan? And the second question is, what kind of food would you offer if you open an Australian restaurant here in Taiwan? I would imagine it would be with what we call red tape. In other words, getting permission from the authorities to actually set the restaurant up. You'd, you'd also need yeah, money. I want yeah, right. And I wonder, you know, how can they be able to get permits? I mean, uh, if they do uh, those innovation work, and do they rent the place or they bought the place? That makes a whole difference in the future if they run the business successfully and the owner might want to take it back. It happens very often. Mm. 
So then I was surprised that two Americans are owners. Usually it will be team up with another Taiwanese, Taiwanese girlfriend, a local people to uh, to ease the red tape. Well, perhaps they boyfriend. And so, yeah, right. So, oh, yeah, maybe <laughs> a Taiwanese boyfriend. <laughs> But this, two Americans are owners, is really interesting. I, and I wonder what kind of, uh, you know, obstacles they have uh, overcome. And the second one is uh, more interesting. Uh, what kind of food would you offer in your restaurant? Maybe students like to know what's the difference between, Australia. yeah, yeah, Australian. Br uh, kangaroo burger? <laughs> I've only tasted kangaroo once in my life. How was it's it? similar to beef. It's similar to beef. That's not bad. It's no, it's very, very lean. There's no very fat in it. We we also okay, have so emu. Into we also have emu. That's kind of bird, right? Yes, a big bird. Uh, yeah. So we have kangaroo, emu, so kangaroo, crocodile. Crocodile. crocodile meat is a bit like oh, chicken. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, depending on what burger? part of the croc. Uh, they do in okay. some places. And it's law. Um, it's, a, it's not against the law to offer crocodile a burger. No, as long as you've got a permit. Um, It's difficult harvesting crocodiles because they don't like being killed. Nicholas, you know, if you come mm. to Taiwan and open an a Australian restaurant and only offer a crocodile burger, a emu burger, or a kangaroo burger, I, I bet you can make a hit. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to spend about hundreds of thousands of dollars setting it up and finding permission. Those are crocodile cuts. So ah, from the crocodile, you can get all that sorts of different meat. Wow. I've never tasted emu. Um, I would imagine it's fairly r tough. Now, do you have many crocodile dishes? You know, you um, know, to you'd yeah, you wouldn't pork, find pork. many restaurants offering, restaurants offering it. You'd have maybe to go to a specialist restaurant. Okay, maybe you know some Chinese restaurants. You can offer this to some Chinese uh, chef, and then they can come up with great uh, crocodile dishes. Hmm, the crocodile uh, noodles. Yeah, because usually Westerners just me eat the meat the way they are, right? And then add salt yeah. to it. Yeah. Uh huh. But we season it, we fry it. Uh, we have thousands of ways of cooking fish or meat, different kind of meat. Mm. So maybe this, this should go to the Chinese. Mm. Oh, I, I do I, you I have crocodiles in Taiwan? Chinese we do, but I don't. I never. I don't know if there is a crocodile dish. We we really should survey. And you want to if you want to specialize something. Yeah, I think that that's a niche. That would be. How about koalas? It's crocodile. Koala? No, we don't have that. And you offer koala? Yeah. Burger? That's no. against the law, right? No, they don't. It is. It is. They're, they're, they're regarded is as a um, protected species. Okay, is it good? Does it taste good? It doesn't have much meat on that, right? just like a squirrel, right? Yeah, it's a, oh, they're, they're, they're mangy creatures. We actually have crocodile farms. So crocodiles are actually farmed, but koalas aren't. Nicholas, um, is a crocodile bag for women expensive? Uh, yes. You know, if they, you make yeah, it, yes. how expensive? 
or three or four hundred Australian dollars. For a small tote? Uh, yeah. So this is a crocodile farm. Um, they okay. feed the crocodiles and then the when they're a Yep. Yep. What do you want? Can you also show us a, a crocodile tote? A uh, crocodile bag. Yeah, right. Then we maybe it can become a family heirloom because it's so expensive. <laughs> what you, what you Nicholas Depends on who makes it and how it's designed. Is that so that's made of crocodile. Uh, most women. mostly women, or metrosexual men. Can you give us a suggest suggested price? How much would that cost? I I would imagine it's it's around three to four hundred dollars Australian. Okay, so that so that's a, it's a, a, it's, around, a it's a form of leather. Yeah, I know. But it's just so beautiful. And it, it's like 10,000 mm. NT, 100,000 NT, right? Yes. Yes. 100, you want question? You want question? Yeah. If you, you know, Nicholas, you ha happen to come up with a, a used a second hand a crocodile tote in a flea market, um, maybe you can, <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> Maybe I would like to get one. Oh, you know, I have someone, I have a similar one like this from Thailand, and I guess it's a fake. Mm. Yeah, I exactly yeah, well, there's a like similar anything. one like this. Yeah. And, and so that's a baby crocodile, right? On the uh, they're about three years old when they're killed. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe I should look into the eBay store in Australia and, and we'll come up with really nice find of crocodile bear. This is a very cute This is one of the things I got for the Christmas pearl. It's an egg timer. Oh yes, I want you to show us your Christmas thing. What is that? <laughs> well that's the I like eggs. What Christmas gift? Like gift Somebody has given me this year. a set of little chicken things, little egg things, an egg timer, is that cup? and is that cup? yes, it's an egg cup. Those are egg cups. That's an egg timer. This is this is an egg whisk. This is an egg whisk. What happened? Is it is um, it an egg ear of a chicken for you? So it's from chicken ear. Uh, no, this this, uh, this is uh, th this is my partner's Come idea on. of a joke. This is for making omelets. This is for making omelets. And it, it continues the egg theme. Oh, wow. And then there's an egg. Well, I call a spatula to make it, and then there's a there's a thing for making fried eggs, a little tiny pan. All your gifts have to do with eggs. No, I also got this. It's a new iPad Air. So that's that's what I like. I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> it was the, it's the last one from your partner. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's expensive. What did you give her? Uh, I gave her a, a voucher to go and buy an, an iPad Air. Which uh, I don't know what she which she wanted, so I've given her a voucher, and she'll go to the iPad shop or the Apple shop. 
to buy what she wants because okay. she never likes what I buy her. Okay. <laughs> she doesn't like jewelry or watch or perfume. Yes, she Can likes Pandora. Pandora. Do you know this? Uh, is this a brand name of a perfume? <coughs> no, it's uh, jewelry. Uh, just a minute. So you can get cheap ones, but this is what she likes gold. Which is very expensive. Did she give you strong uh, hint throughout the year? Oh, she got, this is what she wants. Yeah, she got this last year. Okay. So, so this year she wanted an, a an Apple computer because her other uh, old Sony one is on is about to break down. Very beautiful. It's an Australian brand, right, Pandora? No, no, it's um, I think it's American. It's American brand. Okay. Hmm. It's very popular. You can get um, cheaper Pandoras, which are just bracelets and earrings and things. They're like uh, they, these are very popular. So they go from reasonably cheap to very expensive. Nicholas, where's your Christmas tree? Uh, outside. <laughs> I'll take a I'll take a picture and put it up after the presentation. Okay, okay. Now shall we take a break? Maybe. Yeah, have a ten minute break. Okay. See you later. And you have the All picture right. of your Christmas tree. I shall. Hi everyone. I'm Coco. I'm Luke. Our topic is tattoo. Do you know tattoos? Nowadays, tattoos is more and more popular in 21 century. When you walk on the street, you may be seeing people with tattoos on their body easily. We often watch many TV programs introducing tattoos and tattoos artists. Tattoos artists bring their representative work to show everyone. Some tattoos artists even want participate in international tattoo competition. Now, let us bring you to an amazing tattoo world like this. Now let us show you a movie. Thank you. 
After seeing that, do you want to try? Don't worry, we will introduce the following later. The origins of tattoo. We find a deep meaning between Chinese and Western worlds. About 3,500 years ago, tattoo is a kind of panel code in Chinese words. Convinced bands will be tattooed. It is a vigilant way to convey. Tattoos not only let convey realize when they do something wrong, but also let other people comply with laws at that time. Therefore, people will discriminate tattooed people. Otherwise, in Western world, the word tattoo originates from Polynesian Tattoos. Tattoos mean to leave a mark on your body. Tattoos like totems. It can be a decoration of your body, like animals or landscape. It also can represent certain meanings, like religion or love. So the Western consider tattoos as a kind of art. Do you curious about how to tattoo? The vow is first shave and wax your skin surface. Second, tighten that you won't need to draw on a paper towel that take the paper towel print on your skin. Third, begin to use tattoo machine that allow the needles to introduce pigment into your skin. Fourth, apply or intimate like Vaseline to the wound. Let wound recover gradually. Now you have a wonderful tattoo. After listening the process of tattooing, do you want to tattoo? Do you afraid of the pain of tattoo? Don't worry about this. Let me tell you an airbrush temporary tattoo. It comes from Hannah's painting of Indian. It maybe can instant tattoo. Hannah's tattoo use a kind of plant leaf as natural pigments. It can maintain around seven to ten days. Hannah's tattoo not merely beautiful but true. Its greatest thing is that it is hardless to skin. Maybe you can try the henna tattoo. Thanks for Coco sharing. Today I will show you what means behind tattoo. There are more and more people getting tattooed in the world. According to the Harry Interact Survey 2012, 
In United States, girls getting tattooed are more than guys doing. Sometimes you will find a tattoo is so cool and beautiful, but you cannot exactly understand what is the meaning is. We find there are three kinds of symbolization about tattoo. They are affection, culture, and affection. The first one is affection. Some people like to tattoo something bigger to symbolize their feeling. Look at this picture. She's my friend. She tattooed her parents' names in ancient Chinese word on her back. It's not only a beautiful tattoo, but also it's corresponding to a Chinese saying going. Our bodies are precious gifts from our parents. Yes, it's my friend. Is there is their parents name? Taiwan is Taiwanese. Uh, she. In addition, others tattoo some others was tattoo something special and memorable, like rose, heart, and cubit to show their love. While they are seeing the scrap, they will remember their sweet time. Besides, the others use their creativity to share a tattoo graph. They cannot finish a wonderful image without each other. It represents their love and will be forever. The second one is culture. There are a lot of there are a lot of religions in the world, so you may see someone tattoo their card in brief, like this picture. The right one is Buddha. If you see this tattoo, you can guess that he may be a Buddhist. The other one is Guan Yu. He is very famous for personal loyalty in China, in China and Taiwan. Therefore, you can find a lot of temples only for Guan Yu on the street. Furthermore, the original in Taiwan has a tattoo custom. There are two explanations about it. One is women with a facial tattoo are good at weaving. The, the other one is men with tattoo are much strong and brave. The last one is fashion. They tattoo a figure they like just for fun. Look at the, this guy. He put his name on his back so that people can easily call him and find him. Moreover, he tattooed his birthday and a random barcode on his elbow. I think converting your Facebook timeline page into a barcode is a good way to introduce yourself. There are some one tattoo an animation road, Doraemon. Don't you think it's very cute? However, many people in the West are crazy about Chinese war. However, many people, however, it always makes negative Chinese confused. Look at this figure. The meaning of this word is that American is stupid and foolish. So we should know what we have tattooed on our body. Conclusion, if you want to try tattoo, you should make up your mind because the modification procedure is difficult and com complex. If you really want some cool scrap on your body, you can try henna painting first. It's our, it's our presentation. Teacher, do you have any problem? Yes. Are tattoos popular in Taiwan in your class? Sorry, excuse me. Please, uh, please say again. Okay. Does anyone in your class have a tattoo? Have a tattoo? Does anyone have a tattoo?
I think there's no one. <laughs> no, it's interesting because um, in the people I teach in Australia, perhaps at least a third have tattoos. This is Australian. Uh, in the international students, many Japanese have them. Also, Koreans have tattoos, but not many Taiwanese have them, and not many Chinese students here. And I understand in Taiwan, they're not. They're still not very popular. Is that true? Mm, I think because Taiwan and Chinese are from Chinese culture, in mm. in our presentation we will see the the cartoon in Chinese are some something to warn things to punish. So we will con we will <laughs> think that people with tattoo are are <laughs> a bad guy. Dangerous. Yeah, bad guys, that's it. <laughs> it has the same culture here because a lot of bikies have tattoos. Do you, do you know what bikies are? I, I don't know. Sorry. Uh, oh. It's bi bi yes. biker. Bikers, that's right. And um, they can they they are regarded often as dangerous people. Nicholas, um, can you show us pictures of bikies? Are they cyclists? Yeah, you'll have who, who ride? Yeah, you'll have no. Yeah. Can you give me the token back? Okay. Token. No, I would thought if, if it is um, uh, a bicycle rider, they're supposed to be nice no. and nature-loving <laughs> people. But no. this is <laughs> motorcyclist. Just a bit. They're a mo They're more than a motorcyclist. They're gangs. Okay, they are. Uh, they ride Harley Davidson. Is that Harley Davidson? Yep, that's it. Yep. Bikey. That's it. So the per people who ride uh, Harley Davidson doesn't have don't have a good reputation. No, nope. oh, some, some, so, some of them don't have. So some people are bikies, but they're very good. Others are bikies, and they're dangerous. They're into crime and murder. Uh, they they like to think of themselves like the Jacuzza. Is that is that the correct name for Jacuzza? The Japanese mafia. Okay, that Japanese mafia. Yakuza. Or yak yeah. Yakuza. Uh, okay, so like that's that. is it's in Japanese origin, yakuza. Hmm. What does that mean? Um, mafia, Japanese mafia. Yeah. Yeah. The the uh, people who ride Harley Davidson enjoy a neutral image here. They just want to have mm. their own lifestyle, and there are people who can afford to buy a Harley Davidson. They are highly yeah. well, uh, associated with they're crime. They're very expensive. Yeah. They're 35,000 35, Australian. That's 35,000. Mm. Mm. Oh. So they're not cheap. They're and not But uh, uh, some, some bikies are very good people, very but good others, people. they are are associated with um, crime. Uh, you know, if you park uh, a Harley Davidson on roadside, will it get stolen easily? Do uh, you no, have to because they don't, there's not that many. They, so they, they find it too easily. 
this this is a Japanese baby or what? This is an Oriental yeah. baby. Yeah, yeah, baby Buddha. Uh, wow, this is from Japan. Mm. When sh when he grows up, the pattern will it be enlarged, right? And it won't yes, look. Yes, I don't know. This I may not be real. Again. This may be henna. Okay. Okay. One, 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 would, like, really one would hope so. But he will look like a mafia already. <laughs> Don't you think so? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he has that kind of look. Hmm. But this whole body tattooing, whole body tattooing. is quite unusual. Mm -hmm. we, we don't see much of this. The, the people tend to get one or two, you know, like um, the the two students showed the um, so it's quite interesting though. I'm going to do a poll, Pearl. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, but it, it depends on what kind. Okay, tattoo for to what extent is the old body tattoo or a tattoo of small small rose or a name? Would you would it you can get make one? A difference. Okay. So I, I think I don't think anybody in the class would have the whole body. Okay, so small to perhaps small to perhaps two. Luke. But, but would you get a tattoo? Yes or no? Most of you said no. Interesting. The ones that said yes, I'm not going to say who it was, but there's one girl and three males that said yes. Actually, no. There's. Oh, I'll see you in a minute. Just a minute. So. Six people said they would, and of those six, uh, one, two, three, four, there's five males and one female. So only one girl would have a tattoo and five males would. <coughs> a lot of people, um, as long as you can't see them, will have one, and if they're temporary, some people get them done, like in henna, but uh, you mentioned Luke and uh, Coco, so it's interesting. Um, but once you've got them, they're permanent. So as you said, you should make sure that you, re you really want one. What about you, Pearl? Would you get one? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Wendy and Sylvia, do you want to go straight on with the next presentation? Uh, 
Nicholas, are you saying that we should go on right after this one? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, do the presentation. Okay, second give presentation. A, okay, give us a few minutes. Good morning, teacher, and Merry Christmas. We are. Thank you very much. I'm Henry, and this is Eric, and that's Tony over there. And today, we would like to share with you a part of our culture, which is the night market. Okay, now, what's special about night market? Well, first of all, it's always very, very crowded. You can see that in the picture, everywhere you look, there's people sitting there eating or walking or waiting in line to buy some food. Why is it always so crowded? It is because that it is very natural for people to be attracted <coughs> to a place where there's already lots of people standing. And night market has have this specialty specialties. You can see that there's many people in a night market, so you naturally grow curiosity and you want to find out what's going on in the night market. That's why night markets can always have so many people walking around. The night market is famous for its food. You can see in the picture that there's so many different choices of foods. For example, you want to eat some shrimp. You can choose from Thailand spices shrimp, or you can choose the fried egg shrimp. Those two pictures shows that even shrimps can be made in a very different way. There are also many other kinds of food which we will look. And some I would like to introduce you if you come to Taiwan and visit a night market. This is the famous stinky tofu we often talk about. It has a very special smell that you can smell from very many blocks away. I mean seriously, many blocks away. It is very crispy in the inside, and it tastes kind of spicy, but I enjoy the taste very much. And beside the stinky tofu is some fried chicken, which is also very common in night markets. You can try out a fried chicken with a cheap price, and they taste very good, but very unhealthy also. Here are some weird snacks. This is called the fish egg. No, it's called the fish egg, but it has nothing to do with fish, nor with egg. It's just, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like kind of some chemicals mixed together to make those snacks. It tastes really good, but also very unhealthy. OK, now let's introduce something we all know about. Are those food to wear for you? Let's go get some steaks. When you speak of that, what do you think of? Served with the delicate steak in some fancy restaurants? No. This is what the steak looks like in the night market. So it, it, its quality may not be as good, but it served is not much popular meal in the night market. When you order <coughs> when you order the steak, it can satisfy your desire for meat and it can it can also fill your stomach since there are lots of noodles. Uh this is Henry. He says that. 
no wonder it's a must eat in the night market. After having a big meal, I'm, I'm sure everybody will be thirsty. What can we buy for drink when we are at the night market? There are more than 20 choices of drinks. You can first have a papaya milk, then enjoy a cup of brown sugar bubble milk tea. And just before you leave, buy a cup of mango green tea to go. You can never get bored of trying all those drinks in the night market. Finally, when you fulfilled your need for food, why not have some fun shopping? You can find a lot of cheap, ch cheap clothes in the night market along with lots of cell phone accessories. It is usually cheaper than those stored in stores, but no less good looking. So if, if you don't care too much about brands, Take a look and you might find the night market a shopping paradise. You can do almost anything in a night market. So next time you visit Taiwan, make sure you experience the unique culture of Taiwan. And we took many pictures of the night market, which we experienced ourselves. And it is really great, but it's a little bit crowded, like I mentioned before. And And here are my, our team members. Special thanks to Cindy Lai. She helped us take the pictures. And this is our reference. Thank you very much. Are they night markets only in Kaohsiung, or are they all over, all over Taiwan? There are like three night markets in Kaohsiung. I think more than three, but there's a lot, at least, at least five, I think. But some of them are big, some of them are small. I enjoy the big ones better because they sell more. They sell more things. Hmm. What time do they operate? Uh, at night, obviously. Yeah, well, from like from six o'clock to about twelve or one a.m. I don't know. Okay, every night. Uh, depends. Some market, some night markets opens every night, but others don't. Hmm. How do the people that run the stores, do they have time off? Well, I think they day? sleep during the day and then work during the night. But every night? Without a holiday? Possibly. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I have the token back, please. I want to talk about the exam in two weeks. I believe you've been told already that the exam has been moved forward to next week. So the exam will now be on the 8th of January. A couple of you are doing it on Friday. So that's the 8th of January. Now, because we've only had a few classes since midterm, we're going to have to use a listening text from the first half of the term. And the one I'm going to use is the one on Korean cosmetic surgery, which I'm going to do in a minute. All right? So we've already done that, but I didn't ask any questions in the midterm test. And so there are seven questions this time in the final exam on this text. So um, I'll w it will be done today. As I said, it's from the first half. Now, there will be no other material from before midterm. 
All right, so the only thing we're using is this one, and we're going to repeat it today. Anything else is from is from the time of the midterm exam. So all other questions uh, will be from the rest of the time. So now anything we do today will have questions in the final exam. Um, just a minute, please. Uh, there's going to be tw it's the same as last time. You'll have 25 um, listening, 25 reading, and 10 from grammar and vocab we've done. Um, the, what the hints I've been giving today are in the exam. So I've written the exam already. It's already posted. Now, um, in relation to the Korean one... I can Wendy or um, Sylvia, could you post that for me, please? Now there are eight questions. Um, the the questions are not exactly what's in the exam, so you do need to listen to it yourself. Um, now I go to the end and start. Cl Eric, can you do question one? So what problem is bothering this child, and why? Okay. Okay. Um, let me take this down. Um, Claire, can you do question two, please? So, how many operations does this guy put do himself every day? Okay. Uh, Mike. Actually, Claire, you do these two okay. questions. So, Claire, questions two and three. So, how many operations are done a day at the clinic? And then, M Mike. Yes. Um, where does the city, sorry, where does the doctor do the surgery? And as well as eyelid, what other operations are done? Okay. Okay. Will. Why do the Chinese want a pretty face? Uh, okay. Um, lost my head. Eric, Claire, Mike, Will. And finally, no, um, Pano, can you do the last two questions? Uh, so that will be seven and eight. Why do Korean mothers have surgery on the baby's tongues? And what is cultural imperialism? Okay. Can you start that when you're ready? And also on here, don't take any notice of Pactor. That's a mistake on my part when I made the video. So it's not Pactor, it's correct. You can start that when you're ready.
Okay. <clears throat> All right, Eric, what problem is bothering this child? She has a small eye. Do you think that's correct? You think that that is a real problem? Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, Was there any difference yeah. between her eyes at the end of the operation than the beginning? Uh, Eric, do you think her eyes were different when she'd had the operation? Uh, a, a little. Yeah, a little. Yeah, I, d I, do, I couldn't see any difference, to be honest. It was interesting. Uh, Claire, how many operations does the guy in the video do himself every day? Two dozen. Yep, two dozen. That's twen over 24. And how many operations a day at the clinic? One hundred. Yeah, so it's quite a number. So I don't, I don't think they're all eyelids, but anyway. Mike, what, where does he do this surgery? In Seoul. The capital city oh, right, in right. Korea. And uh, as well, do you know what else he does besides eyelids? Um, nose be shaving and uh, facial, uh, facial contouring. Contouring. You know what that means? Uh, just contour. Mm -hmm. I think it's as same as reshape. Yeah, more or less. It's like a facelift, and it's just making your face a little bit different. Mm. Um, Will, why do the Chinese want a pretty face? Mm, because. They want to look more like a uh, model in magazine or um, advertising board. What do you think? Or get do you think it's all worth it? Mike, would you do it? So, Mike, would you have this done for a pretty face? Or are you pretty enough already? I think I'm pretty enough. <laughs> Do you think it, you think this is true? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think this it's not it's not true for all kind of cases, but it is true for some cases. Hmm. The Koreans are very focused on this. We get them in Australia, and even in Australia, uh, they are frequently having surgery, especially on their eyes. Pano, why do Korean mothers have surgery on the baby's tongues? Oh, well, sorry, was that you, Will? Whose question was that? Yeah, Pano, can you talk? Right, Pano, can you answer that question by typing in? Can't hear you. Pano is at home. Oh, yeah. He's, he's having trouble with his sound. I can't hear him. Well, Pano. Maybe he can type. Yeah, type the answer to this one, Pano, and then I'll ask somebody else, number eight. <coughs> Is 
who haven't I asked a question today to? Leonard Lynn. Leonard, you, no, you're going to get asked the last question, okay? Leonard, you're number eight. Yeah, Tito. Yeah, okay, in a minute. I know Pano, I'm sure is. Not a quick English typist. You can see they come up here. That's correct. So by t by cutting the now, thank you, Pano. By cutting the um, thing under the tongue, they think that they can um, make things. The children can pronounce and speak better, which is has been definitely shown to be not true. Um, all right, Leonard, um, what do you think? Where are you? Leonard, 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 do you know what cultural imperialism is? Imperialism. It means that the Western culture is, be is better than Asian culture. Yeah, more or less. So, um, it is a belief. Now, this is another hint for the exam. So, it is a belief that looking Western is better than looking Asian. So, I am applying it to this, to what we've just watched. So, a guy in it says he thinks that cultural imperialism is because that uh, in this case, uh, Chinese and Korean people wish to look Western, and the belief is that looking Western is better than looking Asian. So it's it's um, not really having surgery, but you know if you look more Western, then you're supposedly better. And that's but as you say, cultural imperialism is the belief that Western culture is better than than Asian culture, which. I can tell you a lot of people think Asian culture is better than Western. You you may think that, and uh, I think Asian culture has things in it that are much better than Western. For example, you um, children in the West or children in the West in Asian culture. are brought up um, with much better morals than in the West. That's my opinion, because at the moment a lot of kids in the West are out of control. They be, they've been told they have rights. So what, what are rights, um, Leonard? What are rights? Pardon me? If if we in Australia, children are told they have rights. What what are rights? Hmm. Right to to talk their opinion. Yes, exactly. What about in your culture? Are you allowed to give your opinion to your parents or your teachers? Well, in my country. One of us Chinese would not, our parents would not give a chance to us to, to speak our opinion. No. Well, in the West, a lot of people agree with that. There, there used to be an old saying that children should be seen and not heard. Yeah. Uh, that means that children should have the right to be there, but really they should not be arguing with adults. But in the West, this has changed. And a lot of children are now, um, are now not really, they do not respect their parents. Whereas I believe that in, in the Asian culture, this is, most of you still do respect your parents, which is a good, good thing. Jocelyn. Uh, Hello. In your culture, 
do males and females have equal rights? Mm. Some conditions have, but sometimes didn't have, don't have. Okay, give me an example. Mm. In company, some mm -hmm. some jobs needs to males to do work and the employee will give ma male more salary. Yeah. Can you give me an example of a job you're talking about, Jocelyn? So what sort of job? Um, engineer. Okay, so most engineers are... Most now what about, what about doctors? Um, yes. Often male? Often male. Nurses? Nurses? Mm. Yes. A example. Female. Okay. Mm. Now, in your culture, do males do the housework? Um, in the villages, different. Different from the villages. Depends on the individual. That's a good answer. So in the in the past, in the, in the past ma males would not have done housework. Have done housework. Is, that right? mm. Is that right? Yes. But now some may. Well, would do. Depends. Okay. Thank you, Jocelyn. Now you asked to see a picture of my Christmas tree. Um, just a minute, I'm going to have to make these files smaller. Um, now that's our Christmas tree pearl. There were presents underneath it earlier today, but they've already been opened. So um, the, this is not a real tree. This is a pretend tree. It's made of um, metal and plastic. And we we put we put the trees up round about um, December the twentieth, uh, and we go until about. January the 8th is uh, what we do anyway. That's the so-called 12 days of Christmas. Days and yes, I know there's more than 12 yes, days, but 12 those, are what days, we observe. those are what we observe. Can you say more about the 12 days? 12 days All right. of Christmas? It um, starts, starts from when? Well, the 12 days of Christmas the were to do with the Christian calendar. Um, and I think that the Christ was born on, well, see, on the 25th of December was his birth, and the 12 days were supposed to go till, um, I think it was the 8th of January, um, until or about the 8th, and that was the, the, the three wise men of Christian calendar. Uh, they were supposed to have arrived round about the 8th of January at, for his, to celebrate his birth. This is tradition, traditional belief. So the th we talk about three wise men coming to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And um, they took 12 days to get there. And I think those are the 12 days of Christmas. Something like that. Um, so we have all these... Uh,
different traditions built around it. Nicholas, is that is Christmas decoration wrap decoration a big thing in the family? You have have you have to have a ritual it, it, for uh, it is for children. For it the is Christmas for children. Decoration. Uh, so uh, we we still ha I still have a fifteen year old daughter at home, and uh, she gets the tree out every year around about December the twentieth or so, and she puts it all together and decorates it, you know, with all this stuff, and uh, she spends most of the day doing it. So it's, this tree is about about two meters or two point three meters tall. It's a big tree. And she puts it together, and her job is to take it down again. So, uh, so in about a week or so, she'll have to take all the decorations off, store them, and then take the tree apart and store that. So, but it's it's really for children's benefit. And the little kids, they love hanging things on. And it, right at the top, if you're lucky, you can have a little fairy, you stick a fairy on top. And that, and yes, it is a ritual. Um, now that most of, I mean, she's 15, so the the ritual's gone, but she still enjoys it. So she does this every Christmas. How long that'll last, I'm not sure. So she's always wanted one of the one of these before. Do you know what this is called, Pearl? Hush, baby. A gollywog. A gollywog. Can you ride that? Can you ride it? Yeah. So it's, called a yeah, it's called a gollywog. Um, it's just the name of a type of doll. This is this is wrapped up in in bubble wrap. That's just being silly, and it's got some lights on it. But uh, a gollywog is it's been around ooh, for a long time now, and the gollywog doll is um, it's actually considered offensive by some people now because it's said to be not very. Um, Respectful to black people, so but you know they're still very popular. The kids love them. Why do you? So she's always wanted. It has anything to do with unrespectable, unrespectable. Neither do I. Most people don't. It's only a few silly people that you know that feel this. But we, you know, I I got I had to buy this on the internet because they're very hard to find here now. So. um I don't think you'd find one in most places in Australia. Where, where is it made? Uh, this was made okay. in, in, Britain. Made in Britain. In Britain, okay. Mm. And so anyway, that's what, that was her little present. She also got some money, which she wants. And then this was them just having dinner. They're actually having dinner now because I have to teach. <laughs> and were you reused? Will those Christmas decorations be reused the next year? We they'll be reused every year. They might change a little bit, but not very much. Oh, hello. Wait a minute. Sorry, I lost you there. Uh, yeah, so that's my mother. Mama. That's my daughter. That's my sister, and that's a friend of mine who you know. So um, they're having a Christmas meal. <laughs> so. You resemble your mother. I mean, do yeah. I? <laughs> yeah, you do. You they, do. <laughs> they say she looks like me. Yeah, she looks like you too. So mm. what's for dinner? Is it going to be a banquet? Uh, no, the, yeah, it was a seafood. Seafood. So they they're having they've had prawns and fish and uh, a few other things. A little bit of alcohol. This is called eggnog. Supposed to be a feast. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's very hot here. Oh, very hot. And they're, they're <laughs> Yeah, they'll have uh, they'll have another um, buffet tonight. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got some friends coming round, and now everybody will help themselves. So they didn't want a huge meal. You can't see this very well, but this is a Christmas cracker. Um, Christmas cracker. 
a Christmas cracker. And a Christmas cracker, I'll just find the proper picture of one. Uh, you um, bake it or you bought it? No, no, you buy it and pull it apart. Just a minute. Um, yeah, they're, they're like these. So they're, they're sort of they they you pull them and they come apart and inside they have a a, a, li a little present and usually a a good luck uh, message. So it might say good luck for the new year or you know you're going to get married this year or you're going to meet you're going That's to have fourteen like children. Or yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it's it's uh, it's like good fortune. I don't know the origin. But um, you know they they they're quite they're very traditional, and you're supposed to uh, pull it. And if you get the bigger half, you're supposed to get good luck for the year. If you get the smaller one, edible? Tough. Is it edible? Uh, no, they no, no. They they just they tend to just have little messages in them. They they make a noise. They they make a snapping noise when they uh, when they're pulled apart as Open well. There's a little thing inside. Okay. So anyway, the Christmas is the re reunion season, occasion, occasion for reunion, right? It's still something yeah, it's that, that's to look for really what it is now. It's a lot of family get together and say hello to f uh, family and close friends. They, they, there's also a hu it's hugely commercial. So it's it's really just the commercial thing for giving people gifts. So Australia. Uh, remember, Australia's only got a population of 20 million. They have spent around uh, 10 billion dollars in the last week. So 10 billion dollars has been spent on presents. So it's very, you know, the, the, the retailers all love it. So I've I've got a new computer and my cooking utensils. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Then one last question. What's the number one item on children on teenagers list for Christmas gift? Some iPod. sort of iPod. Some sort of iPod. Music. Music. So they they all want a music player and the one they all would like is an iPod. Um they're they uh, if they can afford it, then they want a, an iPhone. But everybody wants an iPhone. Um, but uh, some of them get different players. But you know, but the Apple shops here are really, really busy, and they do very, very well. Okay. We should take a break. Yes, Pearl. Uh, have you still and got the rest of those pictures? Yes, I do. So okay, after we'll we'll, we we'll take a break we'll and then those. do it. Yep. Okay. How um, how okay. much time for break? Just five minutes. Okay, five minutes. Hmm. Okay, Nicholas. We can go back to our uh, photo session. Okay. Because this okay, was a, another the first one another is this was another tradition I didn't mention. So that's a Father Christmas and his reindeer. Apparently, he comes down your chimney and throws presents down. Okay, Paul, who's the first one? What's the first one? Uh, Syria. It's uh, Karina. Kar Karina. The picture is Syria. Syria. Just a minute. Yeah. Right after the Mexico independence. Okay. Have you found it? I'm getting there. What do you think you found? All right. Yes, here we are.
还没有，他还没有，还在想。s e r i o u s 是 Karina Karina Karina， 你的名字叫陈于真。<笑> OK， here we are， 陈于真 Karina。What is it, Karina? What is it, Karina? Hi, teacher. One, oh, uh, when I see the picture, I think that te technology getting more and more developed. Yes. What's that? What's that? iPad. Yeah, what's he using it for? What's he using it for? Why is he using it? Uh, the the man in the picture used iPad to um, target. Mm, I, I'm not sure. This is what they call a mortar, which is a way of firing bombs at people. And he may be trying to aim it, using a compass on an iPad. <coughs> I'm not sure. But um, what religion do you think he is? Mm, I don't know. Begins with M. Muslim. Muslim. That's right. I, if men have beards and turbans, they are usually Muslim. And if they have rocket launchers, they're terrorists. Actually, um, this is the Free Syrian Army, so. They they are soldiers. They are fighting to free their country. So it depends. What do you think? Would you go and fight with them, Karina? Would you like to be his wife? No. No, I think it, you're probably yeah, better staying, probably staying where you are. He hasn't got a long life span. I don't think. Thank you, Karina. And the, Thank next, you. the next one is Johnny. The, because Pano is at the dormitory and cannot talk, so the next no. one is uh, Johnny. Quick news. Quick news. Quick. Two pictures after this one. Yes, I've got it. Yeah. I've got it. Johnny. Yes. Well, Are you well yep. I think uh, they work hard and they have no home and bed to sleep on sleep on it. Sleep on the road is very uncomfortable. Yes, what else is it is it safe? Sorry? Is it safe? Mm -hmm. No, it is very dangerous. Yes, uh, I think they're stupid. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to snooze, you can at least sort of stay at the side of the road. They're in the middle. Yes. What is a snooze? Take a little sleep. <laughs> mm, little sleep. Do, mm. Do you think it will help them? Uh, taking away the danger. Do you think it, a, a quick snooze is going to help them? Mm, maybe. They're working. <laughs> maybe, we don't know. But uh, as you say, it's not very comfortable. It's dangerous and it's probably quite hot because the, the tarmac gets very hot. So I don't know. Would you do this, Johnny? Would you like to be a labourer when you finish university? No. <laughs> and you see, Something Nicholas, we see we yeah. see dogs snooze on the roadside, and they don't care about traffic, and the cars will always avoid them. 
interesting. If they did this yeah. in Australia, they would be arrested. This people? Yeah, they're not allowed to do this. You can't lie on the road. For what? You'd have to get because up. You were it's dangerous. Yeah. It's they, they want you off the dangerous? road and you could lie as... Yeah. You have to take some yeah, responsibility for your own safety. Dangerous to the person who, who takes this or for the drivers? Both. For other... Vi yeah, I, I agree with you. Mm. So, um, Shall we go I mean on to the next one? Yeah. All right. What's the next one? Next one is Luke. Pope visit Brazil. Yep. Right next one. Right next picture. So this is a special Pope special vehicle. Pope mobile. Mm. Yes, it's called the Pope Mobile. Mobile. Luke? Mm. So, Luke? Yes? Tell me about it. Tell me about the Pope Mobile. What is it for? Mm, when I first look at this picture, I think there's a very famous people come to a place. And when I see this, is a pop to visit the Brazil. It's yes. a famous people in the religion. Mm. And uh, there are a lot of people take photo of him. And there are many security people. Yes. Why are these people raising yeah. their hands up? Mm. Why are they doing this? He just wants to take a picture of him. Yeah. Also, the people in Brazil are Catholics. Uh, and they believe the Pope is the head of the church, the Catholic church. So they're praying for the Pope to bless them. So they, they regard him as... Um, they regard him as a symbol of God. the symbol of their God, so they want him to bless them. So they're, they, they're very devout, very, um, the Catholics who are very fond of the Pope. And the Pope Mobile is actually, it's bulletproof, so people can't shoot him. Because a few years ago, somebody tried to kill the Pope, and uh, he doesn't want to be killed, so he's now in a Pope Mobile. Okay, Luke, thank you. Who's next, though? The next one is uh, Mexico, Mexican violence. Mexican yep. violence and it's uh, John. John, it's your turn. Yep. Hello. 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 Merry Christmas, teacher. And, and to you, John. What do you think of that picture, John? Uh, huh? Um these two people uh hunting on by the rope and the uh, and I think it's the uh, uh, Mexi Mexican drug dealer do that. Um, yeah, what's the yeah. What's the state oh. of health of these people? Sorry, can you repeat? Are they well? Are they going to recover from uh, They are police. No, they did. Uh, yeah, they did. It, why do you think they've wrapped them up? <laughs> Maybe they... The dear one didn't want the people to 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 see their face. Mm. <laughs> I am not sure. The Mexicans 
uh, are very violent. They may have wrapped them to stop them struggling to kill them, but um, oh. often they will just dump their bodies. So these people have been hung and killed. So it's not yeah. um, it's not a very nice way to die. But um, I they, think they make yep. I I think they may be the uh, the other dealer of the drug. They yeah, want correct. to kill them and yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of war, a lot of war, uh, there's war between the they call them drug cartels. Yeah. Or if you like, yeah, drug they gangs. are. Uh, yeah, they are very rich. Hmm. They, I'm I see that in in the news in internet uh, and tell me that uh, uh, they they can they can. Uh, uh, fire with the police or the army. That's right. They've got their own with armies the and they're actually quite dangerous. The police have a lot of trouble yeah. comp uh, controlling them. So they just as long as they're killing each other, everybody's happy. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. But in in Mexico and Colombia, this is a problem. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the next one is Israel Clash and Cindy Lin. Yep. Israel Clash. Okay. And this is our last one because it's going to be 12. Yes. Cindy Lin, Israel Clash. Maybe next picture. Cindy, what Not is it? One. Oh no, I've, I've given you the wrong one. Sorry. Not this one. No, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, what number is it? Have you found it? Twenty-three. Yeah, I found it. Yeah, found it. yeah it's a real class. Okay, right one. So, what is it, Cindy? Uh, it talk about the Israel, the Israel, Israel clash, and uh, the mm. the Palestinian. Uh, Palestinians. Mm. What is this uh, shadow here? The the tear gas. Fired mm. by what? Israel department. Um, what, if, what effect does tear gas have? If I fired some tear gas at you, what would you do? Apart from be very annoyed with me. Um, what effect would it have on your eyes? Tear eyes. Yeah, it makes you cry. And it, it sting, stings your eyes. So and the, the, the yeah. Uh, and and the Palestinians, Palestinians won worshippers were stone drugs. That's right. So the the Palestine who are Arabs were worshipping and. They, they were arguing with the Jews. So the they tried to break them up by throwing by firing tear gas. So this is the Israeli police. And again, it's um it's a difficult country at war between the Arabs and the Jews. It's not very nice. Cindy, are you any relation to Leonard? So Cindy Lynn and Leonard Lynn. Lynn, who's he? We've got Leonard Lynn and Cindy no. Lynn. Leonard. So he's not. Another department. He's from no. okay. Information. Okay. Finance. Leonard Lynn is from finance. He could be his wife or something. Okay. <laughs> 
So that is the last one. So we will save the rest right. for next week. Uh, but we don't have class uh, next week, right? No, we there's a test next, next week. week. So the final, uh, for only final for two test people. is next week. No, that's for everybody. No, no, it's only for two people. That's for everybody? You. Two weeks after one. Two weeks after is for everyone. And but this one for But you better talk yeah, to um Sylvia and uh Wendy because yeah, yeah, right. at the moment. So when is the exam? The eighth of January or the fifteenth? Eighth. Yeah. Eight for everyone, right? That's what mm. I right. That's okay. Yeah, okay. And we still have a more presentation on the fifteenth, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. All right, so I'll see you in two weeks then. Okay. See you then. All right. Good night, Phil.